there. Welcome to the Schwoben's Nest. My name is Sandra, and I'm so glad you're here. Today is a brand new episode of Timber Tuesday, where all of my projects have something wood-related in them. For my first Timber Tuesday project, I'm using this wood birdhouse cutout. Now, I did cut this out using my laser machine, but I'm sure you can find these at craft stores or at the dollar store, or you can even take a Dollar Tree sign that is square or round and cut out this shape. I'm using this pre-made stain that I always have in a bottle. It's just a combination of water and acrylic paint in burnt umber, a little bit of gray, and some black. I'm simply going to apply the stain, brush it in with the paintbrush, and then wipe off the excess with a paper towel. Once it's completely dry, I'll use hot glue and some of this reindeer moss that I get at the Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to do the roof outline. I'm not going to go further down. I just wanted it to look like there has been a whole bunch of moss growing on the roof of this birdhouse. Don't forget when you're using hot glue and florals like this, sometimes the glue will come through. So I did have to grab my little silicone spatula here because I did burn myself a couple of times. Once I was complete, I just tapped off some of the excess because there's always some loose stuff. And you can see here that I got smart this time when I was using the moss and I put a piece of paper down to catch everything. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a haircut because I just don't want it too scraggly looking. And then I'll tap off some of the excess again. Here's a little tip for you when you're using reindeer moss or Spanish moss, take some hairspray and give it a couple of good coats. That will act like a glue and it'll keep all of the little bits and pieces stuck. I decided that I wanted my little birdhouse to have a little dowel, a little perch for my bird. So I'm just using one of these little dowel pins and I think I got these in a pack from the Dollar Tree a while back. They do come in handy for little projects. So if you see them, grab them because they're just a little fun piece that you can use for all sorts of things when you're crafting. I'm going to take the same stain and give it a light coat. But everything that I'm using, if you can't find it at the dollar stores or Walmart or Hobby Lobby, it will be listed in my Amazon store. So make sure you head down to the link in my description box. Check out my Amazon store for all of the supplies that you see me using in my videos. I purchased a 15 foot grapevine garland and that's what this is and I really love it because the twigs on this garland are really thin and it makes for a really beautiful delicate wreath so I cut a piece and I glued it together and now I'm just going to be gluing it right on top of my birdhouse Using hot glue again, this time I'm taking some Spanish moss and I'm just going to squish it down on the bottom of my little wreath form. So again, use the silicone spatula because I end up getting the Spanish moss stuck to my fingers and I just never learn. It's sitting right there. You can see it, but I just don't have the wherewithal to pick it up and use it. I had a little extra piece of the garland, so I just kind of stuck it on to the bottom so it looks like it has a little bit of a ledge. I don't know. It's hard to explain, but I hope you can see what I'm doing. Now it's time to add some florals, a little bit of greenery, and I'm going to add one of these little chunky birds that I used in my last video when I did my spring mantle makeover. If you haven't seen that video, it is definitely worth the watch. So I'm adding some of these solo wood flowers. They are the rustic ones that still have a little bit of the bark on them. They're called skin flowers, and they're beautiful. I love using solo wood flowers 
what I'm doing here is just adding some little bits of scrap wood to make a little bit of a raised platform so I can glue the bird on. If I didn't do that, it was probably going to fall in towards the center because it would only be attached to the little grapevine wreath on the side and by its tail. If you notice at the top, I did add a jute rope hanger. I did that before I started adding all of the embellishments. And now I'm just going to let some music play and you can watch me very quickly put all of this together. I'm really pleased with how this project turned out. This project is using some of these plastics eggs. I got a dozen of them at my dollar store for $3, just about the same price of what we are paying for real eggs. So that's kind of scary. But anyway, I'm using one of these little pokey tools from the Dollar Tree and I'm just poking all the way through. I'm not going in a straight line. I want it to be a little jagged and ragged. And as I go around, I'm going to be able to then meet up with the pokes that I started off with and very easily just take a pair of scissors, cut in just a few of the little spaces and I'll be able to just pop that lid right off. Here it is one more time, a little bit quicker, but giving you the same idea. These scoring tools from the Dollar Tree are fantastic. I pick them up a lot, usually once every three or four months. I go through them quite often. They're not the best quality, but they really do a good job of piercing through harder plastics. I dug around in my stash and I found this small little canister and it's the perfect size for what I was looking for. I'm going to be taking the eggs and hot gluing them to the very bottom of the jar and I'm going to go all the way around. This was something that I saw on Instagram and I just fell in love with it. I had to recreate it for myself. Now I do have a little bit of a different take on it. I'll show you the picture here in a second from what I was looking at. They had it with some real flowers. I'm going to be using artificial, but that's okay. Now, when you're doing the second and the rest of the eggs, make sure you add a little bit of glue so the two eggs will also hold together. I grabbed this large wood slice that I have in my stash and a big blob of Spanish moss. And I'm just going to set the eggs and the jar just right on top of it. I'm not going to glue anything down because I want to be able to use some of this later on. That wood slice is like gold to me. So I like to use it for different projects. In order to hide the rings that show that it has a screw on top, which it does because it's a canister, I'm going to take some of the Dollar Tree twine and I'm going to knot it first. I'm going to leave that long piece hanging because then I'm going to be able to tie it off later. And I'm going to just wrap it around as many times as I feel it's necessary to hide all of those rings. So it's going to be fairly thick. I will use some hot glue along the way just to make sure that the twine stays put. And once I get to the end, I'm going to use that extra piece of twine that I didn't cut off to tie it off in a knot and then you don't even see any of the strands.
in keeping with the rustic theme, I'm adding some little twigs into the eggshells. Then I'm going to add some greenery, some florals. And on the inside of the jar, I grabbed a little stump that I had. I glued that to the bottom of the jar and then added some reindeer moss around the outside of it. And I'm going to be adding something a little different to the inside of the jar. So you'll have to stay tuned to see what I do. In my last video, I made a really sweet little twiggy magnolia tree and I made another one and this one I'm going to be just gluing right on top of that stump inside the jar and I think this turned out super cute. I am so in love with it. I'm really happy and pleased with this one too. If you've been with me for a while, you know I like to repurpose things. This was a crate that I had used for a different project, and now I'm going to make it over. I'm using some chalk paint, and it's called clay. I think it's very similar to the mineral in the Waverly sort of um, dirt color, I guess, or maybe like a potting clay kind of color, so mixed between a gray and a brown. I'm going to give it a heavy dry brushing all the way around, and then I'm going to do the same thing with some burnt umber just in an acrylic paint. I took some plastic eggs that have styrofoam on the inside and I cut them in half and then I'm taking a piece of tissue paper and I crumpled it up. Now I'm just going to hot glue it right onto the egg itself. Now this is like I said a half an egg and I'm trying to create the look of those bulbs that you see in the daffodils and the paper whites and that kind of thing sticking out of the ground a little bit. I'm going to keep folding and gluing until I have all of the edges and the points of the tissue paper right on the little half egg. And as you can see here, I'm just kind of squishing it to give it some wrinkles and keep it all in place. The wrinkles in the tissue paper are going to sort of mimic what a bulb looks like, but they're never white. So I'm taking some of my little pre-made stain color and I'm just going to dab it on and give these sort of a brown color. You could do different colors. I know some bulbs are more of maybe like an orangey brown color. So it really depends on the look you're going for. I just liked the brown because it blended really well with the box. I'm taking some long greenery stems and I'm going to create this little bulb with the green leaves sticking out of it. These stems have some really narrow areas at the top. I'm also pulling off the yellow because I don't need that. And then I'm going to trim off the really skinny parts at the top and round it just a little bit so it looks more like either some narcissus or daffodil leaves, you know, all of those ones for the spring that are really long and narrow. Using this little piercing tool from the Dollar Tree again, I'm going to poke through the tissue paper, through the plastic, and then just wiggle it around and make a bigger hole so I can push the stem in. And then I'm going to push all of the actual greens right down to the bottom so they look like they're sticking right out. I'm going to do two for each of these. I filled the box with some styrofoam and then used some hot glue to glue the bulbs in a row. I also added some little white flowers. These were from a dogwood branch, but they're very similar to some paper whites or other little white spring flowers 
like a crocus. So I thought they would work just fine. I used two per bulb. And then I went and grabbed some real dirt from one of my pots that's sitting right outside my side door and I'm just gonna fill it in. this box had holes as handles on the side I decided to take some burlap ribbon this has a little bit of a black stripe almost like a ticking stripe in it so I used that all the way around the top to cover up the handles but then I decided that I needed to put it at the bottom just to make it look more finished I really like how this one turned out and it's something I've never done before I think it's really neat how I created it and let me know if you might create something like this for your home I For this project, I'm using this little terracotta pot that I got at the thrift store and I took some of that grapevine garland again and created an egg shape. I just cut it and then I put it together at the top and hot glued it. Now to put the grapevine wreath and make it stand up into the pot, I'm going to be using just a couple of pieces of wire and I'm going to bend them into a U shape, make them into a floral pick, and then I'm just going to press it down. Then I'll add some hot glue on top and just wait for it to dry. Next, I'm taking some of this eucalyptus and I cut them down into just like one or two little pieces. I'm going to grab some hot glue and I'm going to just push it right onto the styrofoam. I don't want anything hanging out. I wanted it to be really flat so you could still see some of the wreath bottom. I do want to make sure, though, that I cover all of the styrofoam and you can't see any of it. I've grabbed a little bunch of Spanish moss and I'm just kind of going to wrinkle it into a little bit of a circle and then I'll add a bunch of hot glue and stick that in. This is going to become the base of a little nest. I also had some little bits of twig left over so I'm just going to add that into the Spanish moss and just give it a more realistic nest look. At first I had some wooden eggs and I thought I would just put one in there, but then I didn't like the wood color and I didn't feel like painting them. So I went into my stash and I grabbed this little mint green egg and I gave it a few little white speckles and just popped him right into the nest. What I'm doing now though is I'm creating a little really full bow. So I did take some twine, I wrapped it around both my fingers, and now I'm just going to tie it off in the center so it creates a bow. Then I'm just going to take it and really pull it apart, make it sort of fluffy and have a lot of the twine sort of coming apart so it looks really messy. And then I'm just going to glue it on top of the wreath right at the point. Thank you so much for spending some of your time with me today. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. 
Don't forget to do all the things. Hit that subscribe button, the like button, and the notification bell. You don't want to miss out on anything else I have to share. Check out my spring and Easter playlist too for more inspiration. Bye for now. Bye.